I'm Mark Dresner, and this is the Research Insider, a special interview series featuring experts and leaders from consumer research and shopper insights. The Research Insider is brought to you by the annual Shopper Insights in Action Conference, uniting the world's top manufacturers and retailers to activate intelligence and drive basket growth. Joining me today is Paul Walsh. He's the VP of Weather Analytics at The Weather Company. Paul, welcome to The Research Hey, Mark. Center. Great to have you. Good to be here. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your background right. and how it relates to your current role, what you do at The Weather Company. My background is in meteorology, um, but I started that background in the U.S. military, in the Air Force, trained in Illinois to be a, a, a military forecaster. And the reason it's relevant to shopper insights and to retailers and manufacturers is that in the military, weather information is used proactively as intelligence. Mm -hmm. So they use weather information, weather forecast information, and they create strategies that leverage that weather intelligence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I left the military in the, in the late 90s, I basically continued doing the same thing, only my customers were now large retailers, consumer packaged goods companies, and, and more and more now advertisers in general, mm -hmm. to help them understand how the weather, and importantly how the weather forecast, is gonna change consumer demand so they can be better prepared both from a supply chain perspective and also from a media perspective. What, one of the great opportunities that we have now with the advancements in quote unquote big data mm -hmm. and our ability to analyze that data, it, it enables advertisers across all these different industries to really understand from an analytical perspective what kind of weather drives demand for their products and, and at a local level. And the local level part of this is key because the weather impact on all of us as consumers is all local. Mm -hmm. So in March, a 45 degree day in Chicago might feel like a relatively warm day, but you take that exact same weather in Atlanta and it's really cold. Or a two inch snowfall forecast in Atlanta in March results in Armageddon, two inch snowfall forecast in Chicago in March, might be a golf day. Mm -hmm. So right. all of those insights are available to us now mm -hmm. and actionable because of technology. When you think about media planning, uh, you're, you're not usually thinking a day out, two days right, out. Right, right. You know? So how does how does that work into when you talk about the mm -hmm. advertising component right. of you know the weather analytics and a weather strategy? If you yes, know, right? exactly. Yep. Yeah. How how does that work? So it's threefold. First, it's understanding from a historical perspective how the weather is influenced, influencing your product mm -hmm. by location. Secondly, it's understanding how the weather last year influenced sales of products. That then gives you a basis from which to start thinking about your plan for next year. Mm. But if you've noticed, we've been having more and more abnormal years. Absolutely. And yeah. so as the weather becomes more volatile, by overlaying these tools, and this works for planning both from a supply chain perspective, how much product will I need ne next year? If you're a national retailer, for example, where do I need to distribute that across the country because it's such a large country? Overlay on that a really smart, clever marketing message. And then you can, as an individual advertiser, you can start to put in place strategies that will enable you to capture share. Because when it's hot, it's gonna, that, that high tide's gonna rise all boats. Yeah. But if you're in business, you wanna, you wanna sell more than the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. So you start thinking about how you can create a strategy that's gonna sit on top of and basically supercharge the demand that Mother Nature's gonna cause. How, how important is that, is that psychological component versus the actual outcome. In other words, uh, you know, what happens when it doesn't materialize, when the weather doesn't materialize, and you've, you know, you're expecting a, or the forecast changes, right, that, right. that kind of thing. Um, the, the most important thing to point out is that the forecasts are actually really, really accurate. For, with the Weather Channel, our forecast last year was 93% of the markets that we predicted for the entire year with, were within three degrees of the wow. high temperature. We're gonna be wrong, everybody, you can't be right all the time, mm -hmm. but the forecasts are so good that people rely on them that, 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 that it does shape their behavior, which is why the, the forecast factor, why what is being predicted is so important from a consumer demand prediction perspective. Well, what's next here? From building out this whole concept. Yeah. Well, I, I always look at the weather strategy from, a, from an enterprise perspective. So if you're looking at a very large enterprise, say a large national retailer, there's three, there's three sort of legs to the stool. Mm 
-hmm. There's risk management, which is, like it sounds, it's, it's dealing with severe weather and being able to deal with safety issues for their, um, their associates. Um, there is supply chain, which is a, a, a large area of opportunity in supply chain because the supply chains now are getting so good and, and you, can, you can react so quickly. You can now get very, very um, good at being able to anticipate what people are going to be, be needing days in advance mm -hmm. uh, and have the product there. And then, of course, uh, media and advertising, which is the sort of the, 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 the big tent in the pole in terms of being able to get the word out and capture the demand for different products when it's going to happen. There's very few companies now that use all three of those sort of in an integrated way. Yeah. So I believe that, that that is going to be slowly but surely those are going to be sort of combining. Mm -hmm. But also the weather, weather data that we have now is going to become increasingly accurate. Mm -hmm. Because we have new satellites that are going to be systems that are going to be launched within the next couple of years that are going to provide us even more granular data, more data to feed the models. The models are going to get are going to continue to get better. Our ability to communicate that information is only going to get better. I mean, it's it's amazing now with yeah. cell phones. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing, yeah. and and the the advent of mobile technology even today and the advent of forecasts that are becoming increasingly more accurate think of sandy mm -hmm. are already saving lives mm -hmm. it's hard to quantify that because the lives were saved, we're saved. so, so right. you can't go back and say well these people would have been dead you don't know that but we do know that the forecasts are are better the the lead times are longer and people are getting the word faster mm -hmm. So from a retail perspective, the possibilities in terms of being able to better serve your customer by making sure that they have what they need when they need it and they have it in a way that they can order it or that they can pick it up mm -hmm. so that they, they aren't even thinking about, oh my gosh, it's all of a sudden it got you know, 20 degrees colder than normal and it's October and I don't have you know, a sweater for the kids. Yeah. They'll know days in advance, at least, that those kind of weather conditions are going to change and they will be able to get the product, whether they buy it online and make sure it comes in the mail or they just go to the store and buy it and hopefully they'll have a coupon. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> right. Because somebody will have, have, some retailer would have anticipated that they were going to need it and wanted to make sure that they got their business so they would have given them an incentive to come to their store. And that's the key. This is really a planning technology. It is. Yeah. It is. And, and I, I hear because I'm on CNBC uh, quite frequently and, and I, I hear a lot uh, analysts using the word uh, in a very snarky way, the weather excuse. Mm -hmm. So I've sort of taken it on myself to, uh, as a mission, is to eliminate that weather excuse and help companies become uh, what we used to call in the military all weather night fighters. So mm -hmm. no matter what the weather is, they can continue to perform. The way they perform is by anticipating what's going to happen, leveraging that knowledge to execute and making sure that their customers have the right product, the right time, the right price, and all the sort of blocking and tackling that retailers have to do every day. Right. Well, thanks for bringing this to us, Paul. I, I think it's absolutely fascinating and can't wait to see what develops. Great. Great to have you. Great. And that concludes this episode of the Research Insider. I'm Mark Dresner, and you've just heard the Insight Scoop. Mm -hmm.